Welcome back to Team G503 here on YouTube for Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. Gonna do in the next, we've been doing the wiring videos now. There's been eight of them so far doing the actual wiring harness of the whole Jeep. I wanna jump ahead to something. I wanna show you some pieces of the horn and some different things that go together, components that go together with that horn because it seems uh, that's something that a lot of folks kind of run into some trouble with and have issues with at some point. The design and system is pretty simple, but there's little pieces that can go bad and it happens often. So I'm going to break this up into a couple of parts. In this particular video, I'm going to show you how we connect the, we'll put the shaft on the steering column here, and then we'll connect the wire brush to that. And that'll be the simplest part of this whole thing. And I'll kind of explain how I go along here on how this system works. But I'm going to break it up into three because I don't want to make one long video. I want to make a couple of short ones because each individual and uh, component needs to be addressed. All right, let's have at it. Okay, I've got my steering column tube here, part number A1199, all primed and painted up with Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts paints and primers. And I've got it all cleaned up in the inside as well too. And I'm going to show you here a very important component. This is your horn contact brush. It's part number A302. And make sure you get a quality one because there's a lot of reproductions out there that really just fall apart when you install them. How this works is this brush connects to this copper ring and the horn ring on the steering worm gear is part number A747. But that makes contact with it, and this is actually part of the grounding circuit that enables your horn to work. If you notice there, I've taken some 220 grit sandpaper and I've cleaned up that ring so I can really get a good positive contact. There is a wire that's soldered onto the outside of the ring that I'm pointing to here, and it travels up through the inside of the steering worm gear to the top here where you've got your button and the spring that's installed. And when you push that button, that actually grounds this complete circuit out, and that is what enables your horn to sound. And we'll get into that more when we install the horn, but I just wanted to show you the components here. So let me show you this one last time. We're going to take our brush. It's going to ride on top of that ring, and you're going to see here that this pushes in and out and rides on a spring. That enables you to turn the wheel and get the ground complete no matter what position your steering gear is in and that rides up and down as your wheel turns back and forth. Before I install the brush here on the column, I want to show you that I've actually taken the 832 tap and I've tapped those holes so they're nice and clean. I won't have any issues with my screws going in them after I've primed and painted it. And we're going to install the horn brush with the tang, as I'm showing you here, force facing upwards where you can see that screw. And there's a longer section of that brush casing that goes towards the top. The screws are 832 by quarter inch with coinciding lock washers. I've inserted both of the screws in the lock washers and just finger tightened them just to get them in position and make sure my holes line up. And after the fact, I'll go ahead and tighten them up with a flathead screwdriver. And I like to clock my screws as people have watched these videos notice that it's just a little quirky thing of mine. I think it looks professional and nice. The next part we need to install is the steering column clamp. It's the lower it part number A635 and it's got the bolt and the nut and the lock washer on there and you'll want to install that over the top of the steering tube first and don't forget to do that and ask me how I know if you forget to put that clamp on before you put your steering tube on there you're going to be sorry and be taking it all apart. So we'll just slip this down in between the hole here. You might have to spin it a little bit to get it to fit and then we can go on the outside of the Jeep here and get it into position. I'm going to position this with the head of the bolt facing towards the fender and the nut and the lock washer facing towards the engine as shown here. Next, we'll go back on the inside of the tub here and we'll gently slide this tube. You don't want to catch that brush on your way down and damage it as you're installing it. You're going to come down to the bottom here and there's going to be something a little bit magical that happens and it confuses some folks and it confused me a couple of times why the tube wouldn't go on. And here's where you can absolutely damage your brush. If you notice here, I've got to almost the top of my steering box and it stops. Well, there's a reason for that. The actual inside contact brush there is actually hitting the beginning of the ring and stopping it from going all the way down. So here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and install the clamp on a little bit farther up on the tube, about a half inch up. And then what you'll need to do is pull up on the brush spring there, and then it'll drop down into the place where it belongs. You'll have to perhaps wiggle the tube back and forth and get yourself a nice fit. I'm going to line that slot up right at the top, it's right at the top there where your steering box is, and then I'm going to keep my column the same way just as I'm showing you here. You want it a little bit offset, but you want this brush to be not able to be contacting with anything else or touching any wires after you connect it to your horn wiring. I'll use two box end open end wrenches, they're half inch, and I'll just go ahead and tighten that up. And you want to tighten that clamp so it really snugs down there on the steering tube cover there and keep that slot just a little bit slightly off to the right. Again, you don't want anything touching that horn brush or that wire. 
Now we'll install the black wire with the two white tracers. That was in the short left side video that we did just a short period back again, and we left it loose there if you remember from that video. We'll go ahead here and we'll move the screw and the star washer that's underneath there. And in this position, that star washer likes to dance out and jump on the floor. So see, keep your hands really nice and tight on it when you grab a hold of it and remove it. I get this out of here here and I'll show you exactly what that star washer looks like there. And that'll cut really nice into our wire and make for a good contact. To make it a little bit simpler, I'll install the screw and the star washer onto the eyelet there, or the end connector of that wire, and I'll use the wire to hold that in position as I get in here with my flathead screwdriver and get this started. Now again, you want to keep your wiring nice and straight here, so hold the wire before you tighten this fully down and make sure that that's going to be straight up and down there connected to the contact on your brush. This is an area that you don't want any other wires or any other leads touching this, as actually if you ground that area, your horn will sound. On my CJ2A, I learned this the hard way, I actually had a wire touching that, my horn would just sound off for no reason, and it took me a while to figure out the problem. But that's what the brush and the wire looks like installed. I'll have the second video out for the horn wiring series very shortly. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by hitting that subscribe button down there at the bottom. Also, smack that little bell one time with your finger. That will give you notifications of when we release new videos. The, uh, the subscriptions of these videos is going off the charts lately, and I'm enjoying that and watching the views go. So it seems there's a lot of interest out there in these old Jeeps. So we're going to keep right on doing what we're doing. Thank you again for watching. See you next time.